All right, we just want to let's continue on for when we stopped last week. We continue with our subject on milk, meat, and bones. Milk, meat, and bones. That's what we continue with, and uh, this is part three of this study, in case you're joining us for the first time. We need to go back to the previous ones so that it becomes easy for you to understand what we're dealing with. And um, our text is Hebrews 5, reading from verse 14. I mean verse 12. Hebrews 5, reading from verse 12. And the word said, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, with being the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become such as of need of milk and not of strong meat. Milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the world of righteousness for his babe. Then it's a but strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to design both good and evil. Praise God. There is this point I want you to note again before I move on. Um, verse 13. It says... Everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the world of righteousness, for he is a babe. Everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the world of righteousness, for he is a babe. That means the world of righteousness is meat. Those who are unskillful are on milk. The world of righteousness is meat. And like I said the other time, we're going to move from meat to bones. But the progression is from milk to meat, from meat to bones. Now if we understand that the meat stage have to do with the laws of the first principles, then we must begin to understand that meat is something higher than the first principles. And the scripture describes that for us here as the world of righteousness. Hallelujah. And you remember, Jesus speaking to the disciples says, if you seek, Matthew 6, remember that one? Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Praise God. Amen. So then, what is righteousness, which is the meat stage of our discussion? Don't forget, the man that uses milk is unskillful in the world of righteousness. That means it does not have experience. That's what actually that was stands for when you talk about unskillful. To be skillful means to have experience, but to be unskillful means you do not have experience. Is that okay? Good. So if you're dealing with me, you do not have the experience of what? Righteousness. I just want you to get that. I want you to get that. You are unskillful in the world of righteousness means you do not have understanding about righteousness. You do not know what righteousness is. You can apply what righteousness is. You are not experiencing what righteousness is. So, like I said, righteousness is the meat of the gospel. The elementary principles, then you come to the meat, then you come to the milk. I mean, the, the, the bones, so 
the meat of the gospel is the word of righteousness. So now, what is righteousness? The first thing you just need to understand about righteousness is forgiveness is a cleansing of all unrighteousness. You just want you to first see that. Righteousness is simply that your sins are forgiven. It's very simple, and I'll make you see that. First of all, let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 21. Galatians 3, verse 21. The Bible says, Is the Lord then against the promises of God? The Bible says, God forbid, for if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. And I want you to see those two things. Life and righteousness. That means righteousness produces life or gives life. Now he's saying the law, which is the first oracles of the principles of the word of God, does not give life. That means the law does not produce righteousness. I don't know if I get in this. Look at it again. He says, the law then against the promises of God, now remember the promises of God in the sea shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Can you get that? Very good. Then he said, God forbid, for if there had been a law which could have given life, verily righteousness shall have been by the law. So righteousness equals life. I don't know if you are getting that. Very good. So the law could not give life because the law could not produce righteousness. Now the Bible is saying the man is unskillful, it's not, uh, that's the man that uses make. It's unskillful in the word of righteousness, that means unskillful in the life. What life do you think we're talking about? The life of Christ. <laughs> Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Let's follow on. Go with me to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Let's look at it from verse number 1. And he said, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? For Abraham were justified by works. He had wherefore to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that walketh is the reward, not reckon of grace, but of debt. But to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for what? Righteousness. Then verse 6 says, even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Hallelujah. Now I want you to follow that. Abraham received righteousness, but it's called an imputed righteousness. But the truth is, the righteousness we're talking about is life. And it's not just imputed, it is impacted. I want you to notice the difference. Abraham received imputed righteousness. But we are not just receiving imputed righteousness. We are receiving impacted righteousness. Because you see, you can't be righteous without being born again. And it's not just an imputed thing. It's an impartation of life. Because the life of Christ equals the righteousness of God. I don't know if anybody is following this. So we are not receiving imputed righteousness. We are receiving what? Impacted righteousness. 
because he's giving us his own life it's not just counting it to us it's not just crediting our account it's not it's not a record to be how do i describe this it's not like maybe this is your account and then someone is crediting to your account if you have an account at the bank money is sent to you it is in your name right you have access to it but that is a little bit different from when life itself is impacted to you now you need to understand what christianity really is christianity is not a changed life christianity is what an exchange of life is that okay he took your weakness and he gave you his strength. So it's an impacted righteousness, not imputed righteousness. It's much more than imputed righteousness. It's an impacted one. That's why those who are impacted with the righteousness, with the life of God, they can be able to design between good and evil. Because it's life. Hallelujah. Imparted life is what righteousness is and not just imputed righteousness because we are born of the seed of righteousness by the Holy Spirit. Righteousness is the life of Christ infused into us. We don't have real spirit when we get to heaven, in quote, we receive new bodies. If anything. But your spirit right now has been impacted by the life of God. And the life of the Christ we're talking about equals righteousness. So you are impacted with righteousness when you are born again. Now don't forget, those who live by the principles of the false oracles, they have no understanding about what? Righteousness. They say they are unskillful in the world of righteousness. Meaning, they really cannot experience the life of Christ. We live by the law. <laughs> are you with me? Francis Gary is working. So, righteousness is truly the DNA of the one that is born again. We are created, and I'm going to read the scripture, we are created in the righteousness of God. We are not just given. It's not just an impartation. That's what we are made of. And so remember the scripture says, in John 3, 6, or so, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Remember that? That which is born of the flesh is not talking about your human flesh in the true sense. That which is born of the flesh, remember, Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus. He wasn't dealing with the flesh of human beings. He was actually talking about the law. Because you see, Paul said the same thing to the Galatian church. Have you so begun in the spirit and you're ending up in the flesh? What was he saying? Has somebody come to deceive you to go back to the law and have forsaken the spirit by which you are impacted to become Christians? So the flesh is not just dealing with human flesh. He's talking about the law. So here is a, a, a rabbi of the law and Jesus was telling this man, you are born of the law. That means you are living your life based on the law. But you need to be born again. What is that supposed to mean? You need to come to my camp so that I can impart life to you. And where is the impartation going to take place? In his spirit. I've explained this time with that number here. So when you look at this, you see capital spirit and small spirit. That way the burn of the flesh is just human flesh. Because remember, all of the ceremonies of the Jewish system has to do with outward washing. Sacrificial outward washing. I cannot talk the conscience of a man. Washing of feet, washing of body, wash, 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 wash. Remember that? Very good. But here you've got to be born of the Spirit 
That's your human spirit. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. Remember that? Very good. So the Holy Spirit comes into your human spirit and you are born again. And the Holy Spirit coming into your human spirit is this Christ's life. Being imparted to your human spirit. And that is God's righteousness. So God's righteousness is not just an imputed thing. It is the life of God. And then if you're not experiencing God's life, that means you're still walking in the realm that Nicodemus was walking in. In the flesh. What does that mean? The first principles of the oracles of God. That means you're the mixed age. Because those who are unskillful in the word of righteousness, they live by the first principle of the oracles of God. Is it making sense to you? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. This is where you see your spirit must be alive to receive instructions. Always and all the time. You see, I've been meditating on what we're going to be looking at on synergy, and the Lord began to give me, I was telling my wife yesterday, the Lord gave me three scriptures that I'm going to be dealing with in relation to prayers. Your spirit must be alive. Is that okay? Otherwise, you walk like Nicodemus. You'll be walking in the realm of law. <laughs> but though you are in church, but you're walking in the realm of law, because your spirit is not alive to receive instruction from the Lord. Which has to do with the life of God. Praise the Lord. So righteousness, I repeat, is the DNA by which you were created. Look at Ephesians 4. With me, Ephesians 4 verse 22. Let's look at that. Ephesians 4 22. Now this is what it says. That they put off the old concerning the former conversation, that's former life, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And verse 23 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So your mind has a spirit. Is that okay? Actually, when the Bible says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, is the spirit of your mind that is being renewed. That's another thing. Verse 24, and the Bible says, And then they put on the new man. Now you look at this. Which after God is created in what? In righteousness and through holiness. The new man is created in what? In righteousness. So righteousness is not just imputed. It's your DNA. Are you with me? And this is very serious. In the Old Testament, you have an imputed righteousness. But in the New Testament, you have created righteousness in your own dna it's your life it's not something you just receive it's what you are made of oh somebody needs to understand what i'm talking about are you following what i'm saying here because the life of god in christ praise the lord look at verse 25 wherefore putting away lying speaking every man truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another which after God is what created in righteousness look at just this one passage two strong emphasis made about the creation of righteousness you are created in righteousness you and you didn't just receive righteousness you didn't just I mean it's not just credited your account that is what you are made of you are a product of righteousness. Oh, come on. Praise the living God. So this is definitely dealing with the creation of man in relation to Genesis 1 verse 27. Let's make man our image. God created man in his own image. That is, God was a model. According to that which he was formed in the spirit of his mind. God was the model. Man was made from or into the model of God. God is not physical. God is spirit. His image is spirit. You you living in a body, but you are truly spirit. That is your real you. Praise the living God. So the word says that we should put on the new man. 
which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, or in the holiness of truth, whichever way you want to put that. Sorry, I have to say this. You are holy. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you, don't, you don't walk into holiness because you see, righteousness and holiness is, the, is what you are made of. It's, you see, it's your DNA, it's, what, it's your product. You are a product of these two things I just mentioned righteousness and what? Holiness. When the Bible said, Be ye holy, it was not a suggestion. Do you understand that? <laughs> when Adam said, Let there be life, if God said, Let there be light, there was light, right? Anytime he says the word, remember the word will not return to him void. So if he talks to you, be ye holy, you have no option, you've got to be holy. Because that is his word. And he says, honor his word more than his name. It was not a suggestion. Go ye into the world, it's not a suggestion. Go and see no more, it's not a suggestion. Peter, come to me, it's not a suggestion. These are commandment and impartation of lives that brings transformation to whoever receives such words. You following me? So you're created in righteousness. It's not imputed to you. That is your life. You've been wondering, but with the kind of love I'm living, that's the mystery of what I'm saying as well. Mm -hmm. We will get to see that a little bit. So we see that from this particular passage in Genesis 1, 10 to 7, Moses meant to say, man was made in the image and likeness of God. It was actually the righteousness and the true holiness of God that man is made up of. Genesis 1, 27. Let's make man our image and let him have dominion. Right? All of those things. It's the life of God that it was impacting into man. Man was a model of true holiness. This is completely different from the righteousness that Abraham received, if you want to believe that. Is that okay? The righteousness of Abraham was credited to him, imputed to him. It's like saying you are righteous. That's also good. But going beyond that, at that level, you are still at the mixed stage. But when you come to the mid stage, you come in to know that your life is made up of what? Righteousness. You are a product of righteousness. You are a product of holiness, which is the image of God. Are you following that? And this is impacted into your spirit. It's a product of God, I mean, into your spirit, impacted into your spirit. You are made up of righteousness and holiness. That's what you are made of. Hallelujah. So we find that the image here actually refers, Genesis 1, 2, 20, 26, 27, refers to righteousness, true holiness, and true knowledge. Like we find in Ephesians 4, Verse 24 again. So read with me Colossians 3 verse 10. Colossians 3 verse 10. What do you find it? Remember the creation in Genesis 127. But Colossians 3 10 says, And I put on the new man, which is renewed what? In knowledge, after the image of him that what? Created him. Now you got to get this. That means the image of God you're becoming is true knowledge. And the man that walks in unskillfulness using the word of unrighteousness, the word of the law, they are unrighteous, I mean the unskillful, as regarding what righteousness stands for. That means they do not have the knowledge of what the true image of God really is, which has to do with God's righteousness that you are made of. Hallelujah. This looks a little bit deep for you tonight. Am I right? But it's not deep. It's just not deep. 
Maybe you want something about faith, something that can say, oh, come on. You believe seven steps to becoming like. <laughs> no, but you see, all of those things are still elementary principles. No, I say that. Because Jesus said, if you seek the kingdom and his righteousness, all those things shall be added. You don't need faith to receive some of those things. That's the honest truth. Because you are a joint heir with Christ. And look at what Jesus said. God even knows that the lilies, the feed, and all of He knows that you have need of these things. So sometimes when you pray for those things, it's like you are trying to tell God He help. He doesn't know, but God knows that you have need of these things. Do you even know why you need healing in your body? Because God needs your body to move, to walk, to do things. That's why you need healing in your body. God knows why you need to be healed. Praise God. So Colossians 3 is telling us that the only thing that takes us back to that thing is what? The knowledge. And those who live by the law do not have this knowledge. That's what we're saying. Are you getting that? They don't have this knowledge that you are a product of what? Righteousness. So we start defining righteousness from you know, all perspective, and some of us, even the New Testament teachers, as it were, the way we try to define the righteousness and all of that. Mom, it's much more than that. Righteousness is actually the life of Christ imparted to your spirit. <laughs> is that okay? It's not something to be taught in that sense. It is your life. That's why he said, like I said before, he said, those who don't have this knowledge, they're unskillful in the word of righteousness. They don't know what righteousness is, so they can't live out the life of righteousness. To be able to design between good and evil, it's practically impossible for them because they have no understanding of what righteousness is. That means they measure everything they measure by the standard of the law. Hallelujah. So we're not talking of just receiving morality, the moral standard from God. But rather it is the whole image of God that is to be formed. The word formed there is kata. Kata yuo, that's what it is there. Formed according to God, meaning the likeness of the divine being is to be traced upon his soul. And he so beard out as fully as his first father Adam before the fall. Adam was a complete being in the image and likeness of God before the fall. Is that okay? In fact, scripture says Adam was a son of God. Remember that? So man is. I don't know how far that is true, but it is said that the baby does not use the blood of the mother in the womb. Right? And if that is true, I can believe that because you find that Jesus did not use the blood of Mary. He used the blood of God. Because the baby does not use the blood of the mother. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? That is why God is his father. Huh? Hey. Are you getting that? No, 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 no. Maybe you can read that from Acts chapter 20, verse 28. The Bible tells us that the Lord bought the church with what? His own blood. Remember that? And where was the blood? In the life of Jesus. No, he didn't share his mother's blood. Otherwise, it couldn't be pure blood. Because Mary was born of a human being. <laughs> and this is a mystery. You see that? So that's exactly what I'm saying. Even though you are in this body, your real you is in the image and likeness of God. It's not your shape that makes you God-like. Otherwise, what do you think? We have the, the Hindus, we have the Indians, we have the Pakistanis, we have the Malaysians, all tribes all over the world, the Eskimos, we all don't have the same shape. But God is one, am I right? 
So if the image of God is your physical structure, that means God is in a split body. But you see, there's one God in the life of every man. So what happens? Anytime God takes a vessel and infuses himself into that person, he makes that person in his image. So it's not your physical structure that is the image of God. It's the God-like that is right in you. You are making the image and likeness of God. It's within your spirit. It's within your mind. Are you with me? So when God enters the Chinese, he speaks Chinese. And then when he enters an Isoko man, he speaks as an Isoko person. That is just it. He takes shape in any man and he speaks the language of the people. Are you following what I'm talking about? And that is why there is nothing wrong in praying in your language. Because God takes shape in you. If he enters into, like I said, a Chinese man, you know, he speaks Chinese right there. And then when he enters an Uroba man, Uroba Wado, he speaks the language. He just takes your tongue and expresses himself. It's not your shape that is God. It's your spirit man that is God. Is that okay? And so we are created in the image and likeness of God. And that creation is in true righteousness and holiness. Or the holiness of truth. Praise the Lord. So you've been created in righteousness. It comes from God. It's not accounting or just imputed. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. This is not an imputation. This is creation. Let us make man an image does not mean let us impute life to, to an image already formed. That's not what he's talking about. Let's, let's have him exactly like us in our spirit dimension and spirit being. And that is why he discovered that Genesis 1 is a spirit man. Genesis 2 is a physical man. God made man. Genesis 2, 7. Remember that? God made man. But in Genesis 1, God created man. You see? So, your physical self comes from Genesis 2, but your real self, which is in the image and likeness of God, is in Genesis 1. And the reason why you have to come up in Genesis 2 because you are going to have dominion over everything that God has created, which have to be on the earth. Now, if you truly look at the word human, when you say human being, is humus being that is to say you are taking from humus earth the being from humus humus being that's human being because you're taking from the earth in genesis 2 why so that you can relate to what you need to work with because spirit can come to invade the earth to have dominion only the one that is made of the earth can have dominion over the earth. That is why it could be very strange and it is to think that angels will come and govern your city. Because angels are spirit beings. They can relate to human beings. That's why they are messengers. It is you that have dominion, not angels. As far as the earth is concerned. Because the angels have no relationship to the earth. But you do. So you can rule the earth. You see what I'm saying? And that's why the Bible tells us that for Jesus to redeem man, he has to become like man. According to the flesh, he is the son of David. Remember that? Romans chapter 1. According to the flesh, the son of David, verse 3. But according to the spirit, the son of God, by the resurrection. So you need to understand the dimension. As man, you have dominion over what you, you are asked to have dominion over. Praise the living God. So concerning the Son of Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. The seed of David here refers to it being the seed of Abraham as well, which has to do with according to the flesh. But when you want to talk about being the Son of God, it's according to the spirit of righteousness, which has to do with the spirit of life. Verse 4. Praise the living God. Okay, let's quickly turn to uh, Philippians 3, verse 8. Philippians 3, verse 8. I wish you can catch what I'm trying to say. 
There is a kind of power that can surge into your life if only you can understand what I'm describing tonight. Philippians 3 verse 8. <clears throat> Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dungs that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is true, the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by what? By faith. So there is this righteousness of the law, there is this righteousness which is by faith, I'm a righteousness of God which is by faith. Are you, are you understand what I'm talking about? And that's what I'm saying. You are made in the image of the likeness of God as God's righteousness. You've got to get that by faith, knowing that this is what it is. And the Bible is saying those who are unskillful in the word of righteousness, they are babes. That means you're talking of people who do not have understanding that are actually made in the image and likeness of God, which is the righteousness and the life of God. It's not, again, I repeat, an imputed righteousness. This is an impacted righteousness. His life is being impacted to our life through the Spirit. Hallelujah. Uh, let me read a scripture sometime that will make you feel bad. If I have to ask a question, are you righteous? And you say, uh, well, well, well. And, uh, but if I say, do you believe you are a sinner? Oh, yes. That's what the Bible says. All are sin. <laughs> I don't think I get in that. All are sin. I can't claim anything. We are all sinners living by grace. The one I say, but do you think you are righteous? Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> you are not sure. You don't have that knowledge. You don't have that faith. But let me read the scripture. 1 John 2 verse 29. 1 John 2 verse 29. If you know that he is righteous, you believe Jesus is righteous? You know that everyone that do a righteousness is born of him. What do you mean to do righteousness? It's to leave it out. Do you believe he's righteous? Yes. Has he imparted his righteousness into your life? Yes. So what's the next thing? Live out righteousness, knowing that you are righteous. That's all. So, you see, when the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. What do you think he's talking about? How is he? He's righteous. So are you. <laughs> as he is, so are we in this world. Do you sometimes read that scripture? Do you sometimes quote it? What do you think you are referring to? How is he? And the Bible says, if you know that he is righteous, so as he is, so are we. So it's not about your physical self. It's not even about what is happening to you. It's not about what you seemingly is experiencing. That is not it. The world says as he is, so are we in this war. How is he? He's righteous. You don't have to die to be righteous. You only need to receive him to be righteous. When you receive him, he gives to you all that he needed to give to you, who he is. Hallelujah. Now, there is something that you need to catch about this. Somebody will say, well, if he's saying this, then you're giving license to people to do all manner of things. Let me read the scripture, but I'm going to make you see the difference. First John 3, verse 6. Somebody say, yeah, this is the balance. <laughs> 4 John 3 verse 6. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him. Neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy what? The works of the devil. So what happened? They think there is this thing 
there's an innate power within you to resist, in fact, to regurgitate that what it calls sin. It's an inbuilt mechanism. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why you see there are some things you do, you end up regretting why you did them. Because it's not fitting into your mold. Are you listening to me? It's not fitting into your mold. It's not fitting into your new state. That's why. Praise the Lord. So we are exactly as he is. How is he? He's righteous. How are we? We are righteous. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> Glory to God. As a matter of fact, let me put it this way. The reason you still do some of the things you do is because you're growing in righteousness. Did you get that? Look at our little children. You see, they are walking, they stumble, they fall, we pick them up. But there is something you can't rule out from their life. They are human beings. Come on, did you understand what I'm just saying there? They are human beings. You can change that. The one that says female is a female, the one that says male is a male. But one thing is specific they are human beings. I said it sometime, and let me say it again. You have what they call the animal kingdom, you have what they call the plant kingdom. Is that okay? Animal kingdom speaks of all kinds of animals down to the reptile. They are all animal kingdoms. Now they have a way of relating. They have uh, the same genetic traits, whatever, for instance, narrow it down to the dog. The dog has its own peculiar characteristic that every young dog giving back to puppies will definitely grow up experiencing. Is that okay? So from the animal kingdom, you can come down to the dog kingdom. You can come to cat kingdom. And then, and so on and so forth. They have their own gene they produce of themselves. Now you go to the animal, I mean the plant kingdom, you find the same thing. Species of plants and all that. So you can also break it down to the mango kingdom, the guava kingdom, all from the plant kingdom. Is anybody understanding me? Okay now, so if you can get a simple understanding, what do you think is the meaning of the word the kingdom of God? What do you think that means? God's kinds of people. Just like you have plant kingdom, animal kingdom, God's kingdom. That is God's kinds of people. Simple definition. Is it making sense? <laughs> Praise the living God. That's something that we struggle to define what the kingdom of God is all about. You don't need all of those plenty definitions. It's God's kind of people that lives out righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's God's kingdom. You follow me? Hallelujah. So, what makes up God's kingdom are people who are God's like. Did you get it, Pastor? <laughs> they have the same traits as who? As God. That's why it's God's kingdom. So if you say the animal kingdom, you are talking about animals that behave the way animals behave. They give back to animals just like themselves. So God gives back to people just like himself. That's why it's God's kingdom. Am I helping anybody? So, no matter your stage of falling and rising, and you think you're something, you've done something, whatever, you just... First of all, understand that you are in the kingdom of God. You are God-like in nature. But your human flesh is suffering that which is called the weakness of the flesh. In terms of when I want to do good, I see another member worrying in myself. And the good I want to do, I couldn't do it. The evil that I don't want to do, that is what I do. Is that okay? Romans 7. All right, let me take one more scripture for tonight. But is anybody understanding my definition of righteousness? This is the meat, the meat of the gospel. <laughs> the meat, we have not started talking about the, the, the bones here. This is the meat 
Pastor Kinsley, are you catching this? <laughs> Glory to God. Turn with me to Isaiah 45. This is a powerful scripture. I'm going to be reading this on, on Saturday again when I'm going to be teaching on Synergy Forum. Uh, Isaiah 45, verse 25. Very interesting and powerful passage. I love this. And this is what it says. I, even I, I am he that blotted out that transgression for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Glory to God. You can get it? What did I say? 43. Is that what I said? You didn't get that? No, 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 no. Let me see what I'm looking at. I said Isaiah 43. What did you get? Give me the Bible. Yeah. This is 43.25. So you are giving me something else. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, did you see it? I, even I, I am he that does what? Blotted out that transgressions for what? My own sake, not because of you. And I will not remember thy sins. God says that. So when he blotted out your transgression, what's the next thing he did? The next thing he did, he impacted to you what? His life. Now, let me read something in the next verse, but I'm not going to do fully with that. Look at the next verse. Put me in remembrance of what? <laughs> Glory to God. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou, thou mayest be well justified. I'm going to deal with this as we progress. But what do you think is trying to tell you to remember him? Remember. I will not remember your sins. But he said, remind me of something. So what is it that's about to remind God? Your righteousness. <laughs> Come on. Are you following what I'm talking about? I will blot out your sins. I will not remember your sins. But put me in remembrance. Remind me. At all times. And you're going to find out in John as well. When Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, he said, bring to remembrance your righteousness. Remember that? That is all the only thing God wants you to remind him of. That is what he can forget. But when it comes to your sins, he forgets them. And there is nothing you are going to do to remind God about your sin because he can't remember. He blotted it out. He wiped it out. But when it comes to your righteousness, remind me. <laughs> And I will make you to see how you remind God about his righteousness. Praise the living God. So anyhow, verse 25, and he says, I and even I am here, I blotted out the transgression for my own sake, and I will not remember thy sins. Now go with me to round up. Go with me to Jeremiah 31. Let's look at verse 31. Jeremiah 31, I'm reading from verse 31. Behold, the days come, say the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant did break, although I was a husband unto them, say the Lord. Now you need to get that. The covenant God made with Israel was to come to the place of a husband and wife relationship. And that is why I keep telling people when God says, if you worship idols, I will visit iniquities unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me because I'm a jealous God. The word jealous there means because I'm your husband. So to worship idol means you are taking another husband in my place. So in the true sense, that word is not really meant for you. <laughs> that may be surprising tonight. Because you are not married to God in the Old Testament. You are married to God in Christ. 
from at Marafra from Yahweh to Yahshua. You follow what I'm saying here? So Exodus 20, that word basically was not meant for you. It was meant for the household of faith, which is Israel, that he was married to her husband. Praise God. So here he says, verse 33, But it shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in them in one part and write it in their heart, and I will be to them their God, and they shall be to me what? My people. And they shall teach no man, every man, neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive and we remember they are seen no more. You together? I will remember they are seen no more. Praise the living God. Are you with me? Are you still there? And this new covenant, or this covenant that he said I was going to make, is just dealing with the New Testament. You guys are talking about the New Testament. Which has to do with God's righteousness in who? In Christ. So when he said, remind me, or remember me, he's trying to say, tell me about your righteousness. And I'll make you see that next week. Because it talks about the just, who are just about the justifier. Your confession has to relate to, or must relate to your position in Christ today. As he being righteous, even as he is, so are we in this world. Not because of what you do, not because of anything. This is an impartation of life. And like I said, our little children can do all crazy things, but they are still our children. Our life is in them. They are growing up to become adults. And they will come to the place where they can be able to know that the things they were doing when they were young are not the right thing. The unskillful people are just like the children. The righteous ones who are taking the meat of the gospel, they are people who understand what righteousness is. And not just understanding it as, as a doctrine, but it has become their life because they are created in the righteousness of God, which is the life of Jesus Christ. We are made in Christ's life, which is the express image and the glory of God. Is anybody understanding me? So sometimes when you use the word, all are seen and conscious of the glory of God. Paul was only speaking, but the truth again is you can't say that today because Christ is the express image and the glory of God. So if you receive Christ, you are no longer short of the glory of God. Come on. Does it make sense? Oh, are you following what I'm saying here? Hebrews 1 tells us that, that Christ is the express and the image and the glory of God. Am I correct? So if Christ is the express and the image of the glory of God, and we have received Christ, how can you again be saying you are short of the glory of God? It's radically impossible. You can't be short of the glory of God because you have Christ, who is the full express and the image and the glory of God. And that's exactly who you are. So as he is, so are we in this world. God bless you. I'll see you next week. <laughs>